de DC Jack ou de Power Jack. Here, in the motherboard, as you can see, this is the Power Jack in the motherboard, as you can see. Then we have here the inductor. Here in the motherboard, this is the inductor, as you can see, near to the power jack. Then we have ceramic capacitors, as you can see, four ceramic capacitors. So here in the schem schematic, we have four ceramic capacitors, the same as the motherboard. Here we have the MOSFETs or switches. We have here two switches, as you can see, near to the power jack. We have C21, polarized capacitor. As you can see here in the motherboard C21. So we're going to see the charge IC circuit in the laptop motherboard components. Okay, we're going to see all this component in the circuit diagram and in the motherboard. So, as you can see here, this is the motherboard that we will work on. So, we're going to see all these components in the schematic and in the motherboard. So, we will begin with the power jack, as you can see, the DC jack or the power jack. Here, in the motherboard, as you can see, this is the power jack in the motherboard, as you can see. Then, we have here the inductor. Here in the motherboard, this is the inductor, as you can see, near to the power jack. Then we have ceramic capacitors, as you can see, four ceramic capacitors. So here in the schem schematic, we have four ceramic capacitors, the same as the motherboard. Here we have the MOSFETs or switches. And as you can see, also in the motherboard, we have here two switches, as you can see, near to the power jack. And here we have diodes. So for diodes, there is many type of diodes. We have this diode with this line, straight line. And here, this one is the Zener diode, as you can see. And here also we have another diode with three terminals. Okay. We're going to see all these diodes. So this is the reference for this diode. So let's see it in the motherboard. So as you can see, D1006 with, as you can see, the blue line. As you can see here, normal diode is with the black line. As you can see, D1007, okay, a normal diode with a straight line. And D100 or 1006 with the blue line is the Zener diode. As you can see, D106, this is the Zener diode, as you can see to stabilize the current, and here we have D1007, this is a normal diode. But basically the same measurement. If you want to check this diode, you should use the same working principle. You can use the multimeter with the continuity option. So we're gonna see another type of diode, as you can see, with three terminals. As you can see, we have three here, means three terminals, okay? This is another type of diode, this is like a transistor the same shape of a 3-pin transistor. So let's check in the motherboard. So as you can see here, we have D. This is two diodes. As you can see, we have D1014 here. Okay, as you can see. So this is diode. These two are diodes. Okay? This is not tr transistor. This is diode. The transistor began with Q, not D. So this is the charge IC power management, okay? Here, this is its reference. If you have a bad IC, you should replace it with the same reference, okay? We have U4. The reference in the motherboard is U4. So let's check this charge IC in the motherboard. As you can see, U4, the charge IC, U4, okay? Always U is for ICs. Q for transistors. So as you can see, the charge IC is near to the power jack. Basically, all components, the power components is near to the power jack. So this is the power jack. Here we have capacitors. This is the inductor. Here we have two switches or MOSFETs. And here we have the charge IC. Okay. This is the main component that can be failed in the laptop. 
when you have a digital motherboard or a no power laptop. Here we have another switch or MOSFET. So you will find this near to the battery. Okay, here we have the gate, of course. This is another inductor, L2. Here we have a sense resistor or a current sense resistor, R45. This is 0 0.015. This is a low resistor. So let's check this component in the motherboard. As you can see, this is L2. Okay, L2 inductor. This is R45 resistor, current sense resistor. Okay, so these two components is next to each other, the same as in the schematic. So as you can see, always we have the power jack. So the power jack and the components, the power components are gathered in the same place in the motherboard. So here we're going to see amplifier, some amplifiers. This is, as you can see here, we have plus and minus. This is an IC with eight pins, as you can see, we have here eight. So the eight pins, this is its reference in the motherboard. So let's check that IC in the motherboard. So as you can see, we have U1003, okay, with eight pins, exactly with eight pins. As you can see, four pins in this side and four pins in the other side. Here we have another IC with five pins. This is a voltage converter. It will convert a high voltage to a low voltage. We're gonna check it or see it in the schematic. As you can see, this is the input. Okay, voltage. It can be the 19 volts, as you can see the V adapter. This is the V plus, the working voltage, 5 volts for the IC. And here we have the out, the voltage, the out voltage. Usually the output voltage will be less than the input voltage. And here we have the ground, V minus, as you can see. Here we have a normal transistor, as you can see, with three pins, as you can see, Q. Q means transistors, with three pins, as you can see here in the schematic. So you should differentiate between diodes with three pins and transistors with three pins. Always pay attention because in the motherboard they have the same shape as you can see. This is diode. We have D. Those are diodes. Okay. And here, as you can see, the same component, but we have the reference is Q, as you can see. Q. So pay attention, do not replace a diode with a transistor or a transistor with a diode. You should always pay attention to the reference of the components. So always the diode has a D and the transistor have a Q and the IC have a U reference. Okay. Here, as you can see, we have another IC, as you can see here, with five pins okay as you can see with the same working principle as the ic we have seen this is a, a voltage converter ic we have u1001 u1001 as you can see with five pins the same as this u1002 u1001 and u1002 here as you can see we have the input voltage and we have the output voltage. Always, this we call this an IC, a voltage converter IC. Okay. Always we have the input and the output, as you can see, and the working voltage for the IC. And here we have ground, of course. So this is its model, as you can see, LMC. And here the model for this or reference is LMV, as you can see. So you should replace any failed IC or compound with another IC with the same reference. Okay, always same reference. So as you can see here, we have another compound. This is double diode, as you can see. Double diode D1010 or D1010. We're gonna see this diode in the motherboard. Okay, so this is a double diode. Okay, two diodes 
that are connected together as you can see here in the motherboard okay double diode we have d1010 or d1010 okay so the, as you can see the first diode is connected to the second diode here as you can see the same as we have seen in the schematic here we have other amplifier as you can see we have out means amplifier we have minus and plus the same as this amplifier that we have seen before here we have ground okay this is a digital ground of course there is a analog ground and digital ground here this mark means a signal so this is the direction of the signal okay this arrow means the direction of the signal you will find some arrows from left to right and others from right to left means the direction of the signal from the ic to the control chip or from the control chip to the ic etc we have here ic's as you can see this is a blown ic this is resistors this black component is in the component means resistors exactly as we have here in the schematic all these are resistors the r means resistor so here we have ceramic capacitors as you can see the ceramic capacitor this is, this is not a polarizer capacitors let's see the symbol in the motherboard or in the schematic as you can see this is ceramic capacitors with no plus or minus so this is a normal capacitors a ceramic capacitors or pf capacitors here we have the power management ic okay these are power management ic so we have here inductor and resistor this is a fuse resistor r1059 this is a fuse resistor we have zero above it this is inductor this is a chemical capacitor or a polarized capacitor okay so for this chemical capacitor let's see it in the schematic as you can see this is plus and minus a polarized capacitor we have c21 polarized capacitor and this is ceramic capacitor this is a filtering capacitor as you can see here in the motherboard c21 a chemical capacitor as you can see but for this c22 this is a ceramic capacitor